Hi everybody, I'm Stephanie from Razzle Dazzle Rabbitry and Yarns LLC and in today's video, by the end of the video, you're going to read and figure out all 39 ways, tips, hacks, ways you can spin more consistent yarn. So before we go through this, make sure that you do two things. The first thing is that you hit the subscribe button and you've pressed the bell, that way you get notified on all of our videos when they come out. And the second thing to do is go to RazzleDazzleRabbitry.com. Go into the shop, and at the bottom of the page, you're going to find this free digital download of 39 ways that you can spin more consistent yarn. So pause the video, go do that, download this, follow along, take notes. Let's get started. So 39 ways, consistent yarn. Spinning consistent yarn is something that does take a special sort of, um, I guess a special recipe, a special sort of stuff to get it there. The first one, you have to understand what is spinning. And you're probably like, what? That sounds so simple. It is simple. Spinning is just adding twist. That's it. When we say to spin something, or I'm a hand spinner, it just means that we're adding twists to something. And in this case, it is wool or angora or what other fiber we're spinning. I could spin my hair if I really wanted to. So adding twists, that's all spinning is. So when we spin something, we're twisting it together. Number two. So this is, <laughs> this is something that, uh, it's, it might sound self-explanatory, and maybe it is, but don't make it more complicated than it actually is. So spinning is adding twists. Don't complicate it, right? Keep it simple. Ugh. You don't spell keep with an I. So keep it simple, really. Make sure that if spinning is just adding twist, don't try to take the idea of adding twist and create it into a monster in your own head. Number three, understand you're going to make mistakes. So make mistakes. So give yourself permission. Give yourself permission to buy your fiber, take your fiber, whatever it is, whatever fiber you have, to use it, to spin it, and understand that mistakes are gonna happen. Whatever mistake it is, and that's normal. That's part of the spinning process, and that's part, that's part of the learning process to improve your skills to spin more consistent yarn. So number four, don't let anyone talk you out of it. Don't let anyone dissuade you. So don't listen to others. Negativity. Don't listen to others' negativity. So maybe you're spinning and maybe you are really struggling or maybe you haven't even started spinning and you hear somebody else and they have a lot of negative things to say. If you want to spin, don't let anyone talk you out of it. Number five, read books. Read books about spinning. Read books about fiber. Educate yourself using books, using literature, using the written word. Number six, videos. Watch videos about spinning. Videos about fiber animals. Videos about preparing for, videos about all sorts of things. I have a ton of Angora videos on how to spin Angora. And there's also art yarn videos. There's just a ton of stuff. But watch videos, educate yourself through the ability to look at a TV and listen to what someone's saying and pick up information that way. So then this goes along with it. Talk to others who spin. Talk to other people about spinning. Tell people what you're doing even. People who might not even spin. Tell them what's going on. Share your process with others because when you do these things, it actually helps reinforce what you're doing and it also can help expand your knowledge, which is super important. Then share your yarn. I don't mean give it away. I don't mean 
give your yarn away to people. You make it, you just give it away. No, 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 no. By sharing yarn, I mean share the yarn you've made with others. Share the yarn you've made with yarn groups online. Share pictures of it. Share the video process of making it. Share the finished product with other people and get that out there because people will tell you what they like about it and sometimes people will tell you what they don't like about it. And even though that's hard, it is, uh, it is beneficial. So this, is, this could be a tough one. Enter your yarn into contests. Into yarny contests. So spin some yarn, find a yarn competition, spin some yarn for the traditional yarn, enter it into the competition because you're going to get great feedback. Even to this day, I can spin yarn, enter it into a yarn competition, and I'm going to get great feedback. I don't expect to win, although winning is nice, but you get feedback on the yarn you're making, and that feedback is from other yarnies, other spinners, who help you get better at spinning more consistent yarn. Number 10, look at other people's yarn. Look at other spinners' yarn. Join groups. Talk to people. Actually look at the either the yarn itself, or look at pictures, or look at videos, but physically look at the physical yarn. Take the time and Look at what is similar to yours, what is different from yours, what do you like, what, what is similar to yours or different from yours, what do you like about theirs, what don't you like about theirs, and use this process to help guide you. Number 11, pick up and spin the fiber you want to spin. This sounds maybe self-explanatory, but so many times we can get caught up in all these other things. We can read books and read books and watch videos and we can look at other people's yarn we could do all sorts of things that aren't actually spinning you have to spin you have to do it dress comfortably remove distractions such as jewelry if you have long hair if i leave my hair down like this i spin it into the yarn and then my hair gets stuck in the yard, and then it's really a distraction, and then it's frustrating. So, you know what? Comfort. Make sure your setup when you're spinning is for comfort, because when you're uncomfortable and you're spinning, that's not gonna lead to a pleasant experience. That, that's gonna distract you from the process at hand. So, choose your tools that are designed to spin consistent yarn. This is huge. The Ashford Elizabeth II is the wheel I use because it is designed to spin traditional, consistent, thin, amazing yarn. And it is part of why I can do such a good job spinning my yarn because the tool I have is built to do this. I had an Ashford Kiwi, wonderful wheel to start out with. I recommend Ashford. The original Ashford Kiwi is what I had. I recommend those to start out with. But the Elizabeth II, take spinning to a whole new level. What's the difference? Well, the flywheel is set up to just consistently keep spinning, keep going, keep going. And what that does is it makes a yarn that doesn't have, when you stop a wheel and start, that's when you can start getting little differences in your yarn and it's not as consistent. You can get them a lot of other ways too, but choose good tools. So prep your fiber the best way. Remove matted, webbed, heavily soiled, uh, areas, second cuts, very short fibers prior to carding. So prep your fiber. This is important. If you see rabbit food in your raw wool, take out the rabbit food. <laughs> and that sounds silly. Like it, we can, honestly, spinners, we can get kind of lazy, myself included, and we cannot want to take out the little pieces of vegetable matter. We're just like, oh, we're just going to leave it in and spin it. And then you start carting it. Maybe they still come in. And then yeah, at some point you're spinning it and you've got that little piece of hay that's like going into your yarn. Now you have a lump in your yarn. Not smooth, not consistent. Just prep your fiber. Take the time. It matters. But before all of this, there's something even more important. Number 15, choose prime, excellent quality fiber to start out with. This makes an amazing difference. Amazing. So 
choose and specifically select fiber that is consistent in its staple length, that doesn't have heavily soiled areas, that doesn't have a ton of vegetable matter. So I pronounced this wrong. I, sometimes I say Nequamagon, but it's Namikagon Valley Farm. They have um, amazing fleeces for Gotland and Gotland Cross fleeces. And she will list, is it heavily skirted? Does it have some vegetable matter? What's the staple length? She'll list the sheep it comes from. For fibers to blend with Angora, that's a perfect, perfect place because you literally can select the prime fibers. So start with the best. It's gonna make your process a lot easier. Spin your carded fiber, make it lofty, and make sure it comes apart easily. So I choose carding. Um, there's a lot of different things you can choose, but I choose my preference, not drum carding, not using hackles, I not combs, I choose um, hand carding on hand carters that are designed for thin fibers. They're the Howard hand carters, 190 TPI. They do an amazing job. Next, keep your spinning tools in great shape. So you wanna keep everything oiled. You want to keep it, um, <laughs> you want to keep it, if it needs to be repaired, you want to repair it. Now this is, you, you, those of you who know me, you might see this and you'd be like, Stephanie, you don't do that. No, I don't do that. Which is part of why I struggle sometimes because if I would just do this and keep my spinning wheel oiled, it would be super, so much easier to spin my yarn. But instead, I create this struggle. I don't know, like some sort of form of, yardy self-sabotage or something, who really knows? Anyways, so keep your stuff, like take care of your stuff, right? Number 18, use your senses to spin. Sight, sound, and touch. Use your senses, train your senses, train your eyes, train your hands, both hands to feel. Train, um, train your ears to listen to the different sounds of the spinning wheel because that helps you all in the process of Spinning. Number 19. I love this one. You gotta try, try, <laughs> try, continue trying, continue to spin, continue to practice. You gotta keep trying. You cannot give up. This is something, spinning is something that has to be repeated. It's not something where you do it once and bam, you're done. Like, you have to continue this process. Number 20, learn how to understand the fiber you are spinning with. Different fiber wants to spin up differently. So learn the fiber. Dun, dun, dun. So hopefully by now you've downloaded this sheet and you're taking little notes on this sheet with all the extras that we're including in. So number 21, learn how to fix mistakes in your yarn, such as where it's too thick or too, fit, too thin. Learn how to, can you even read this? Mistakes. Learn how to do this. So sit down and actually figure it out. Number 22, take a break when needed. You need these breaks. So there's a, what would you say? There's a, um, there's a respect that comes with pushing yourself and spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning, right? There's a, I don't know the right word, but there's something about it. Maybe it's just simply bragging to other spinners. I don't know, but there's something about it when you just spin and spin and spin. But I was saying, when you need it, you take those breaks, right? Like when you're, when you are in pain, take a break, stop. When your hands ache and your hands hurt because you're getting tense and you're holding the yarn a certain way and your wrists hurt, it's okay to take a break. So learn, number 23, learn your own spinning nuances, strengths and weaknesses. So what are your strengths in spinning? What are you good at? What are your weaknesses? So what can you improve? What part of spinning is difficult for you? What part of spinning just comes really easily for you? Do you super duper like carding and not really like plying? Learn yourself, know yourself. So learn how to join yarn. Learn your joins, understand your joins. 
That's super important, okay? And 25, learn how to ply and practice plying. So you really need, plying is super important for taking the yarn pieces and putting them together. You have to be able, let me get out of the camera, you have to be able, or get out of the way of this, not the camera, but you have to be able to put the yarn together to create uh, the yarn you want, to create the consistent yarn you want. And plying a four ply is different from plying a two ply. There's differences and you get to learn all these things and practice all these things, which gives us number 26, learn how to wash your fiber and your yarn properly. You need to learn how to wash both of these because when you wash your yarn after you're done and you set the twist, there's different ways to do it. Figure out for the fiber and the yarn you're working with, what works for you. Number 27, don't give up. At this point, you're, you're 27 tips in, right? 27 of the 39 tips in, and you might even feel like giving up on spinning all together after you listen to all these things, but do it, hopefully not, but do not, do not give up. So you may have to take a break, you may have to set it down at some point, but don't ever completely walk, in, walk away from spinning, because if your goal is to make consistent traditional yarn, then don't give up on that goal, because you will get it. It just takes time. Some people, it just takes longer. And then here's this. We don't want, we're not going to wait for perfect. We're not going to wait for perfect, the perfect moment, the perfect tool, the perfect spinning wheel, the perfect fiber. You know what? You're just going to start with what you have and you're going to go from there because all experience has value in spinning. All experience has value in spinning. It teaches us which we may have an awful, awful batch of Angora, and it, we may decide we're gonna spin it up because that's all we have, and we spin it up and we learn how to try and make it as consistent and po as possible, and in the process, you learn. So, number 29. Sometimes you have to force yourself to spin. Sometimes you have no motivation to practice spinning. Sometimes you have no motivation, you have to use your willpower. You have to use something within you and be that go-getter sort of person that says, no, I said my goal is to learn how to spin more consistent yarn. I am going to get up and sit in my chair and I'm in front of the spinning wheel and I'm gonna do it. Even if it's just for 15 minutes, I'm gonna do it. So sometimes you just have to force yourself. Don't wait to spin and don't spin only when you feel like it. Don't wait for those times. Sometimes you've gotta make those times. So, spin different types of yarn. Learn how to spin different types of yarn. Learn to spin art yarn. Learn how to spin um, bulky yarn. Learn how to control the yarn you're spinning because this gives you a depth and a breadth of your intelligence and your knowledge and your experience with spinning that only brings wisdom. Number 31, experiment with different methods of spinning. This is like experimenting with your draws. You can experiment with your wheels, different types of spinning. You can spin a single treadle. You can spin a double treadle. Just the more experience you have, the better. Number 32, use the yarn you make. I cannot say this enough. I honestly cannot say this enough for number 32. You have to, the yarn you spin, you have to use it. You absolutely, 110%, you have to use it. Like maybe I should say that again because I genuinely mean it. There is something that happens when you spin up an entire fleece and sell it and you never use it. It's called like no knowledge. And then when you spin up an entire fleece and you save maybe a skein or two and you start using that yourself, you see how does it behave while crocheting? How does it behave while knitting with it? How does it behave while weaving? What is, what is this? We have a Japanese beetle in the house. What is this? What are, the, what are the strengths of this yarn? When you use your yarn and you create with your own yarn, you learn where its weaknesses are. You learn where its strengths are. It is an amazing tool. So teach others to spin. Number 33, yes? Yes, that's it. Teach others. Maybe it's just your dog. 
Maybe you just want to teach your dog. Maybe you just want to teach your cat. Maybe you want to teach your rabbit who the wool came from, who the angora fiber came from. I do not know. But teach others. Teach someone else. <laughs> because this means you have to know a bit of what you're talking about and you get to uh, cognitively take what you know and translate it verbally out loud to somebody else and make sure that they're under understanding the concepts that you're giving them. That's a whole nother level. Number 34, try to spend at least an average of one hour a day. Average. So this, this may mean, so for example, for me, I cannot spin every single day for an hour. But if I take 10 hours one day and I spin for 10 hours one day, then I have for sure gotten my average of one hour a day, seven days a week in because I've got 10 hours. So, but average it out because life is going to happen. Absolutely life is going to happen. Number 35, use an accurate scale to measure the fiber out into one ounce, one ounce blah, blah, increments. So take your fiber and you may have 10 ounces of angora. Measure it out into one ounce sections. And this is part of the learning how to spin consistent yarn. Now the goal is when you have an accurate scale and I have links in, there's a different video that says how, how a scale matters to the consistent yarn you make or whatever. But when you use an accurate scale that measures not just to the 10th of an ounce, but to the 100th of an ounce, you have a very much more exacting bit of raw yarn and when you spin that and you try to get it consistent across all 10 ounces or whatever, how many ounces you have, and you try to get that spun consistently and the consistent yardage as well, whew, it teaches you a lot about control because you have to do the same thing over and over and over. 36, be forgiving and have patience with yourself. So you're gonna be doing all these things and these are all a lot of things, but you really need to be forgiving with yourself if you make mistakes, if you, miss a date, whatever it is. So don't stop learning and experimenting. Learning and experimenting. Don't ever stop this. You may get, you may find yourself getting into a rut at some point. You may find yourself like, hey, uh, I've been spinning 100% Angora two-ply skeins for the last six months. Do something else. Just, just for a second, do something else. So part of the joy of this is really, um, Again, just another just another way to learn, and you have no idea what you might figure out at some point. I think, I, at some point, we're going to figure out better spinning wheels than what we have. They've, there's got to be more lightweight spinning wheels that aren't made of unnatural materials that are durable that we can transport around to all of our yarny functions whenever COVID restrictions are done, and um, that spin amazing yarn like the Ashbury Elizabeth too, but she's not very transportable. Number thirty-eight. Record yourself spinning yarn and watch yourself. That's right. 38, record and watch yourself. Record yourself spinning yarn. Watch all of it. What are your hands doing? What's your left hand doing? What's your right hand doing? What is your posture? What is the fiber doing? How long is it taking you? Are you spinning slower at the start of this game or the single or are you spinning faster at the end? Are you trailing at different speeds? Are you maintaining? Are you stopping many times to pick out vegetation? What are you doing? And watch yourself do it and really watch yourself looking for what can you do better and what are you doing good already? Number 39. This is probably the most fun and I put it as 39 because I don't know, I don't know, like maybe at some point we can spin with somebody else again, but like in Michigan, we can't really have um, uh, a lot of gatherings right now because we're like locked down, which for an introvert such as myself is lovely on the one hand, but when I want those short doses of companionship, that makes it difficult, especially companionship with other yarnies because like I haven't been to a fiber festival in uh, probably in April, coming up on April, it's going to be two years, I think. It's going to be so long and it's very sad. So, someone else, spin with somebody else. These are the 39 ways to spin more consistent yarn. Look at the sun. The sun has now moved around. That's all.
subscribe. If you want more info, join the channel. This is the best of what we've got right now. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.